Hey everyone, Chang here and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to go over another way to be lazy in math. Well actually in my defense it's more of a shortcut than being lazy. That's right, today we're going to go over the divisibility rules. The divisibility rules are just a set of rules that helps you determine very quickly when you divide one number by another number, will you get a remainder or not. By the end of this video, that's exactly what you're going to be able to do. You're going to be able to tell if a number can be divided by another number. Why do divisibility rules work and how to use them? Let's start off with this wonderful property about division. Basically, when you have one number and you know it can be divided by another number, what it also means is that the original number can be divided by the smaller factors of the other number. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, let's look, for example, at 100. We know from experience that 100 can be divided by 10. Well, guess what? Since 100 can be divided by 10, it can be divided by 2 and it can be divided by 5, since 2 and 5 are smaller factors of 10. Now, for this video, I'm only going to go over the first four divisibility rules. The reason for that is because I want to be able to go into details why each and every one of them work and how to use them. The rest of the rules will be in another video. Let's start off with the number 1. Well, guess what? Any number can be divided by 1 without a remainder. Plain and simple. Can negative 2 be divided by 1 without a remainder? Yes. Can 1,000 be divided by 1? Yes. Can negative 400,655,000 be divided by 1? Yes. Any number can be divided by 1 without a remainder. If you have that one annoying friend who's going to ask you this question, no matter what, you can answer with a definite yes before they even finish the question. For the number 2, in order to check if any number can be divided by 2, we look at the last digit. If the last digit is an even number, meaning that it is 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, that means the entire number can be divided by 2. So for example, if we have 634, we can immediately say yes, this number can be divided by 2. The reason for that is because we look at the last digit. The last digit in this case is 4. Well, we know that 4 is an even number, so therefore this whole number can be divided by 2. Now let's look at another number, 11,347. Very quickly, we can say that the answer is no, it cannot be divided by 2 without a remainder because the ending number, the last digit, is 7. Well, let's look at an even bigger number. Let's look at 128,736. Well, immediately, once again, we look at the last digit, 6. Well, we know that 6 is an even number, so yes, this entire number can be divided by 2. Now, the reason this works is actually quite fascinating. I'm going to start off by using the first example and walk through why it works. Well, the first example is 634. I'm going to get the last digit and I'm going to remove it from the original number. 634 equals 630 plus 4. Now we have two parts. Well, let's look at the first part, 630. Well, 630 ends in a 0, so we know that it can be divided by 10, just from experience. And since it can be divided by 10, it can be divided by 2 and 5 as well. Our focus in this case is that it can be divided by 2. Great. So what we have left over is the 4. Now from our experience, we know that 4 can be divided by 2. Now since both parts, the 630 and the 4 can be divided by 2, then the original number, 634, can be divided by 2 as well. And the amazing part is that this reasoning works with any number. If you want to test if it can be divided by 2, just follow this structure and you can show if that number can be divided by 2 or not. Basically, at the end, we're just focused on the last digit. If the last digit is an even number, it can be divided by 2, then the entire number can be divided by 2. So for number 3, right, this is by far my favorite way of testing number. The reason is, it's so weird, but it works, and that's what's amazing about it. And I'm going to talk about the reason in a bit. But the way to test if a number can be divided by 3, what you're going to do is you're going to get that number, and you're going to take all of its individual digits, and you're going to add them together. Once you add them together, that end result, you're going to test if that end result can be divided by 3. If it can, then the original number can be divided by 3. So for example, let's look at 123. Well, 123 can be divided by 3. And the reason we know that is because we're going to get each and every one of its individual digits. Well, 1 plus 2 plus 3 equals 6. And from our experience, we know that 6 can be divided by 3. 
Therefore, the original number, 123, can be divided by 3 as well. Well, let's look at a bigger number, 4,762. If we get each and every one of those individual digits, we're going to add them together and we're going to get 19. 4 plus 7 plus 6 plus 2 is 19. Well, from our experience, we know that 19 cannot be divided by 3. Therefore, the original number, 4,762, cannot be divided by 3. Now, let's look at an even bigger number, a crazy big number. Let's look at this. 36,995,475. Well, when we add the digits together, we get 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 9 plus 5 plus 4 plus 7 plus 5. That equals 48. Let's say we're not sure if 48 can be divided by 3 as well. And here's the lovely part. Since we're not sure if 48 can be divided by 3, we can use that same rule and test if 48 can be divided by 3. Well, 4 plus 8 equals 12. So we know from experience that 12 can be divided by 3. Well, guess what? Since 12 can be divided by 3, we know now 48 can be divided by 3. And since 48 can be divided by 3, we know now the original number, the 36,995,475, can be divided by 3 as well. And that's amazing. I'm going to use the first example to reason this out. Well, the first example is 123. 123, like any number, can be broken down into its individual places. What do I mean by that? Well, 123 can be rewritten as something like this, equals 1 times 100, remember, the 1 times 100 is just for the original 100, right? plus 2 times 10, which is for the 20, plus 3 times 1 for the 3. Now, since we're working with 100s and 10s, we can actually break it down even further to something like this. Well, instead of 1 times 100, it's going to be 1 times, parentheses, 99 plus 1. The 99 plus 1 is the original 100. Plus 2 times 9 plus 1. The 9 plus 1 is the original 10, plus 3 times 1. Okay, now we're going to distribute this out. So what we get is 1 times 99 plus 1 times 1, plus 2 times 9, plus 2 times 1, plus 3. Now here's the key. If we can show that each and every one of these individual smaller parts can be divided by 3, then the whole original number can be divided by 3 as well. Well, guess what? All the numbers that have 9's in it, that are made of almost completely 9's, can be divided by 9. And since it can be divided by 9, it can also be divided by 3 because 3 is a smaller factor. And that's the cool part of this reasoning. That means all those numbers made up of nines can be ignored, right? That's a bunch of it. We ignored almost half the problem. What is left over is 1 times 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 3 times 1. Well, guess what? The 1, the 2, the 3 are the digits of the original number. So if we add them together, in this case, it's going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3, and it's equal 6, and we can show that it can be divided by 3, then the Everything can be divided by 3. That means the original number can be divided by 3 as well. And this logic works for any number, and that's what makes this so cool. Now, I wanted you guys to see that reasoning at least once. If it was confusing, don't worry about it. Just remember this. For the number 3, if you want to check if any number can be divided by 3, all you have to do is get its individual digits and add them together. The end result. If that result can be divided by 3, then the original number can be divided by 3 as well. And here's the lovely thing. If you're not sure if the end result, that number can be divided by 3, just run it through again. Add all of that individual digits together and check if the result can be divided by 3. And keep on doing it. Eventually, you're going to reach a number that's small enough that you can immediately tell from experience if it can be divided by 3. And if it can, it goes up the chain, and that means the original number can be divided by 3 as well. Now, for the number 4, there is a rule. So what you have to do is you're going to check, no matter how big the number is, the last two digits. If the last two digits can be divided by 4, then the original number can be divided by 4 as well. For example, 332. Well, we're going to look at the last two digits, 32. We know that 32 can be divided by 4, so the original number, 332, can be divided by 4. Well, let's look at another one, 1,478. Well, 1,478 is not divisible by 4. The reason is because we're going to look at 78. 
And if you check, 78 cannot be divided by 4 without a remainder. So the original number, 1478, cannot be divided by 4 as well. Now, the reason this work is actually quite interesting, it's broken down into two parts. There's a part that's smaller than 100, and for that, well, you kind of have to just check if it can be divided by 4 or not. For the parts that's bigger than 100, that's where this rule really shines. So here's the reason. I'm going to start off with using this example. Here we have 146,824. I'm going to break it down into two components. It's going to equal 146,800 plus 24. I basically took the last two digits out. Well, guess what? For the component that's bigger than 100, notice that it ends in two zeros. Because it ends in two zeros, it can be divided by 100. And because it can be divided by 100, that means it can be divided by its smaller factor. In this case, 4. That's what we want. What's left over is the 24. Well, 24 from our experience can be divided by 4, so the original number, the whole number, can be divided by 4. Now, let's take a case. What if the leftover is not divisible by 4? Well, in that case, then the original number cannot be divided by 4. That's why we need to focus on the last two digits of any number. Now, if you can remember this rule and use it very quickly, more power to you. Great. Wonderful. And if you can't, don't worry about it. Remember this. 4 equals 2 times 2. So if you can't remember the rules of 4, just remember that if the original number can be divided by 2 twice, then it can be divided by 4. Well, that was pretty simple. Not too bad, not too complicated. Let the practice begin! 1. Just a key note, I will have the answers in the description for those of you guys who are curious and want to check your answers. 3. Thank you for sticking with me until the end of this video. Let's summarize what we went over. Basically, we went over the divisibility rules. The divisibility rules are a set of rules that let you very quickly determine when you divide one number by another number, is there going to be a remainder or not? And in this video, we went over the first four divisibility rules. For the number one, any number can be divided by one. That's it. Plain and simple. For the number two, what you're going to do is you're going to check the last digit of the original number. If the last digit ends in an even number, that means 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8, then the original number can be divided by 2. For the number 3, all you have to do is get the individual digits of the original number and add it together. If the end result can be divided by 3, then the original number can be divided by 3 as well. For the number 4, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the last two digits. If the last two digits of the original number can be divided by 4, then the original number can be divided by 4. If you cannot remember that, remember this. If the original number can be divided by 2 twice, then it can be divided by 4. Now lastly, please like, comment, and subscribe at least for Rule 3. I mean, come on, you gotta admit, that is so cool. A reasoning where you can ignore more than half of its component, and something so odd as adding all its individual digits together to check if it can be divided by 3 or not, ah, it's just mind-blowing. Well anyways, uh, for the next set of rules, those are gonna be a doozy.